wouldn't be surprised if I'd say today is a day that I just love having come about. It's a day for us to celebrate, and it's also another opportunity for me to tell people about our great state, uh, which I enjoy doing and do it any chance that I can. With the world watching us now, everyone will see once again all the natural advantages that North Carolina can offer a company. From our education systems, where we ensure that we have well-trained workforce, to our business climate, to our unparalleled quality of life, to our collaborative and togetherness in how we get things done, and our leadership in a sustainable, cleaner environment. All of those things matter and have led us to today. And again, important, importantly, how we got to this day has really mattered. Today, Governor Cooper has a major announcement to share, not just for North Carolina, but for the United States. We have many honored guests here beside me, and you'll hear from them in a moment. We're also joined by officials from the location we're talking about today, Chatham County and Sour City. And thank you all again for coming. For many reasons, today is a meaningful day. It's a day to announce jobs in North Carolina and many families will benefit from these jobs. It is a day to hear about a significant investment that will strengthen our economy. And it is a day to learn about an exciting company with big plans that they are launching and expanding from right here in North Carolina. It is a day to reflect and to go forward in looking at the competitive advantages that our economy in North Carolina is creating for the state and for the nation. The company we celebrate today could have gone anywhere, but they chose North Carolina in part because of the way we work together. But I know their decision also relied on the talented workforce and our number one asset, which is our people. Our welcoming and collaborative reputation is well known in the business world. During today's program, you will hear about many of the organizations that make up what I call our Team North Carolina, and it is one fierce team, I tell you. We're committed to ensuring that North Carolinians have every opportunity to live healthy and prosperous lives, and that our state's economy in North Carolina is one that works for all people. I want to thank my commerce colleagues, EDP and C partners, the local officials, the General Assembly, and all of you for making this a state that continues to attract good paying jobs, continues to attract growth in our communities, and continues to attract the vibrancy that we all share and love that, as we live here. I appreciate Governor Cooper's leadership and vision and for leading us all towards a better and more inclusive future. I also appreciate that he works diligently and that we all do in the administration work diligently to make sure that North Carolinians are better educated, healthier, and that North Carolinians have more money in their pockets with the opportunity to live an abundant and purposeful life. So let's hear the announcement we've all been working and waiting for. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Governor Roy Cooper. Thank you. Secretary Sanders, I always like it when you lead with our CEO mission statement. Welcome to the People's House. It is a day of celebration. Today's another step in our drive toward a clean energy economy. And it's a historic day for our economy, an amazing day for high-paying jobs, and an important day for putting money in the pockets of everyday working families in our state. I am proud to announce that Wolf Speed, an innovative North Carolina company and global leader in semiconductors, will build a major facility in Chatham County, creating more than 1,800 great paying jobs with a historic capital investment of more than $5 billion. A 
of course, every time we analyze these economic deals in North Carolina, and some of them we don't do because the math doesn't work. But on this one, our North Carolina economy will see a $17.5 billion impact over the next 20 years. Now, semiconductors that they'll be making here are used in electric vehicles, energy storage, offshore wind, and other clean energy applications. In North Carolina, we put a bipartisan law in place saying we're going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 70 percent by the year 2030 and to get to carbon neutral by 2050. We're working on clean transportation, offshore wind, environmental justice. Of all the places that Wolf Speed could go, it has picked North Carolina. And I think it's important why. And you'll hear from the president and CEO in the minute, in just a minute, who, by the way, has his own EV that is charging in the back of the mansion right now, <laughs> which is exciting for me because I got to go and see it. But when you think about having talented, educated, diverse workforce, that is what these companies of the future want. And North Carolina can provide it. And we're going to hear today from Hilda Pendix Ragland at North Carolina A&T State University, which is right now working on a partnership with Wolfspeed. Uh, Greg Lowe, the president and CEO, uh, and I have had a number of conversations. And as I'm bragging about our state, I say, Greg, you know that North Carolina A&T graduates more black engineers every year than any other institution in the country. <laughs> And he comes right back at me and says, more than the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> so they know, they know what they're getting here in coming to North Carolina. And it matters. We've got to continue to invest in education from cradle to career in order to continue to resupply the talented, diverse, hardworking workforce that they're going to need. And we look forward to our federal partnership, having Ronnie, our own Ronnie Chatterjee uh, from right here in North Carolina helping to head up the CHIPS Act effort, which is going to be an compo important component in this, drawing down that funding to help with this issue, to make our country more secure. It's exciting to have a top mind like Ronnie who understands North Carolina there in that position in U.S. Department of Commerce. A lot of thanks to go around. You know, first the, the, the local governments and local economic developers in Chatham County. You guys have been doing pretty well lately. Uh, congratulations on that. Both all the towns and cities in the area and, and the county and the surrounding counties and towns have, have done a, a great job. I want to thank our state legislature and we're going to hear from both parties Representative Reeves right, right there uh, representing that area and S Senator Fushi representing that area and with the Speaker of the House here and Senator Newton uh, representing the, the Senate. This has been a bipartisan effort and when it comes to economic development, we've been able to do that better than any state in the country knowing that we are the number one state for business in the entire country. I also want to thank our Department of Commerce and your leadership, Secretary Sanders, as well as the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina, led by Chris Chung. We want to thank our community colleges, the Golden Leaf Foundation, all of the local economic development efforts. This is a team effort, and North Carolina works better as a team than any other state. The way we coordinate our businesses, our local, state, federal government, the way we make our presentations to these companies, they get to see who North Carolinians really are. And I'm so grateful for that. So I'd now like to call to the podium the president and CEO of Wolf Speed, Mr. Greg Lowe, for remarks. And I also want to present him something on behalf of the people of North Carolina. Greg. We're proud of the work of our artists and the, the intricate work that they do. Ben Owen is a famous potter 
in North Carolina. Uh, you, you will see this in, in places all over the world. Uh, we are working to connect everybody with high-speed Internet access, and his is the kind of small business that can access global markets. But we want to present this uh, piece of pottery to you on behalf of the people of North Carolina with our thanks and gratitude and a symbol of the future partnership that we're going to have. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. All right. Well, thank you very much. What an awesome day. And um, I got to tell you, it's not very often that you can say that uh, you got to recharge your car in the governor's nickel. So I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that today. So that's awesome. Thank you, Governor Cooper, for that kind introduction. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize some of the other folks that are with us here today, Secretary Sanders, Aaron Chatterjee, Chief Economist, U.S. Department of Commerce, Senator Paul Newton, Speaker Tim Moore, Speaker Valerie Fushi, Representative Robert Reeves, Chatham County Board of Commissioner Chair Karen Howard, Siler City Mayor Thomas Price, and the Chair of NCANT University Board of Trustees Hilda Pinnix Raglan. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for joining us here, especially those of you from Chatham County and from Siler City. Without your support and without your partnership, we wouldn't be here today making this truly historic announcement. Now, Woolspeed has a long and proud tradition here in North Carolina. In fact, we were founded not too far from this location uh, 35 years ago at NC State University by a group of very, very smart and passionate grad students, several of whom are still with our company today. And while the business and the focus of our company, and even the name of the company, has changed and evolved over the last two years, or the last several years, two things have remained really the same. One is our resolute uh, belief in the power of silicon carbide technology to change the world for better. And the second is our commitment to North Carolina and our community. North Carolina is already home to the world's largest silicon carbide materials factory. That's our factory in Durham. We have the world's largest factory right now. The announcement we're going to make today is going to ensure that that title of the world's largest factory stays in North Carolina. This new factory will have more than 10 times more output than the current world's largest silicon carbide factory. It is, it is an amazing addition, and Wolfspeed is leading the way to a more efficient future with semiconductor material silicon carbide that enables systems to perform better, last longer, all while consuming less energy. It's a game-changing technology for electric vehicles, renewable energy, storage, rail systems, appliances, heavy-duty equipment, and countless other electric applications. So, so how is it game-changing? Using silicon carbide, electric cars will have a longer range, and they'll be able to recharge at much faster rates. My car out here in a parking lot has a 520 mile range and I am able to add 300 miles of range in 20 minutes of charge at a fast charger. Pretty amazing technology, all enabled by silicon carbide. Factory machines and motors will use less energy. Network data farms will be able to be more efficient and solar installations will deliver more electricity to homes making us less dependent on fossil fuels. This new materials facility will enable us to dramatically increase our capacity to address the accelerating market demand driven by all of these applications and actually many more applications that our customers are working on as I speak. The wafers produced in Chatham County will support our current and future wafer fabs. Anchored by the world's largest silicon carbide materials operation in North Carolina, and the world's largest silicon carbide wafer fab in New York, 
the East Coast silicon carbide corridor will dramatically improve the way the world consumes energy. Leading a once in a generation technology shift from silicon to silicon carbide requires a skilled workforce that the governor talked about that can help transform these industries. So today, we are also announcing the expansion of our strategic partnership with North Carolina A&T State University. We've been engaged with them for quite some time, and in fact, we announced a, a partnership in 2020 with a $4 million investment to establish an endowed scholars program. Investing in, in these bright young minds ensures we have the next generation of innovative engineering and technology leaders ready to propel our company and our industry forward. We've been very intentional about adding NCANT students to our intern classes for the last few years. And this past summer, we sponsored four participants in the university's HOME program, which is a program that helps orient minorities in engineering, a fabulous program. You should be congratulated for an outstanding job on that. Thank you. This program is crucial to the successful attraction and retention of high achieving students by providing extra academic and personal development support during the transition, the really important transition, from high school to college. And building on this success, we're opening up new opportunities for both undergraduate and graduate credentials, specifically in silicon carbide, semiconductor manufacturing, as well as training and career advancement programs for existing semiconductor manufacturing workers. I'm excited to have you hear more from Hilda Pinnock Ragland, the chair of NCANT State University Board of Trustees, in just a minute here. Let me end um, again by reiterating just how much we at Wolfspeed value our partnership with the great state of North Carolina, with the great NCANT University. We appreciate your support, as well as the support of Chatham County, Siler City, and we look forward to getting to know our, no, uh, our new communities much better in the coming years ahead. We share a common vision for a state and a world made better by ushering in a new world of energy efficiency, enabling a greener and more sustainable world for everybody. Thank you very much. Good morning. It is one beautiful day in North Carolina. I am Hilda Penix Ragland, Chair of the Board of Trustees at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's a momentous occasion in so many facets. I say momentous with good reason. North Carolina stands at the brink of becoming a much larger player in the semiconductor research, education, and manufacturing sector. Not just because of the CHIPS Act itself is an incredible development, but because of the fundamental work we are committing to today that is essential to supporting this industry in North Carolina. As you know, North Carolina is home to about 11% of the semiconductor manufacturing capacity. Of course, I think that just changed. And then just think in 1990, it was 40%. And you know, you've seen Taiwan and China and Japan move forward in this space. But the CHIPS Act has, ch has changed that and we are right there working with it. Unlike China, our federal government cannot and should not do it alone. Our vibrant private sector with leadership from innovators like Greg Lowe and the Wolf Speed family brings an enormous 
vitality and experience to the challenge of our universities like A&T. The partnership that has been announced today leverages those strengths in industry and in academia to create opportunities for undergraduate and graduate education and credentials, actually real credentials in the semiconductor manufacturing sector, as well as training and career advancement programs for the semiconductor workforce. We know the value and promise of this partnership in part because we know Wolf Speed. Two years ago, and I was a part of this, in the middle of the pandemic, then Cree, Greg, we met at their facility, and that at that time they gave us the largest singular gift of $4 million to North Carolina A&T, and we will always be grateful for that. This was to provide scholarships. It was support for our College of Engineering. And it sounds like we're living on that commitment, and we always want to do, so, do that. This is for our communities. This is for the greater North Carolina and the world. The new partnership builds upon the strong foundation. It says that in addition to supporting those students, we are bringing workplace opportunity to them and their fellow North Carolinians and leveraging their strengths in support of the expansion of the semiconductor industry in our state. This is wonderful. Now, of course, Greg and Wolf Speed and their innovation and their vision actually were a part of 59 CEOs that went to Washington. And our, our dear Chancellor, Harold Martin, was a part of that. They really helped to booster the CHIPS Act in America, for which we are grateful in this state. So for anyone who might wonder why a company with such national and global interests would be interested in partnering with North Carolina A&T, the reasons are many and diverse. First, our university graduates more black engineers, and it's been said, in engineering than any campus in the United States of America. And we hold top five positions in multiple STEM disciplines. That makes A&T valuable, an ongoing resource for well-prepared employees critical for this industry today. Second, we have long been one of the state's top three research universities. Our research programs are on a rapid rise today. We were, two years ago, at 60 million. We closed the fiscal year at 100 million, and stay tuned for 2023 and our accomplishments there. Of course, this also includes the third, and that's a commitment to infrastructure and excellence in our education and research programs. And we did so with the governor's help when we opened the Harold L. Martin Senior Engineering Research and Innovation Complex earlier this year. That was a hundred million dollars facility, cutting edge research, state of the art, dynamic for our institution and for the state. One of the things we particularly value about our university is the fact that we are land grant. And by the way, there are only two in this state. You may know that the land grant universities are known as the people's colleges, as they originally symbolized an effort in the United States to broaden the availability of higher quality education beyond the elites, to make it possible for regular working class Americans the land-grant system was a brilliant innovation 
in America, and we're one of them. They have also been the sites of some incredible, important research conducted right here in the United States. The new partnership with Wolfspeed smartly builds upon that foundation, bringing new opportunity to our students, the communities, and the businesses for which they work, with Wolfspeed at the head of that list. We look forward to the fulfillment of these promises and to the further innovation and leadership that will in inevitably spring from the relationship with North Carolina A&T State University and Wolfspeed. We owe so much to Wolfspeed and especially to its leader, Greg Lowe. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Governor, for your vision, your faith, and your friendship. Through the commitment we bring to this partnership, we plan to demonstrate the truth of a statement you hear often and more often these days about our university. North Carolina A&T is always doing, guess what, but we are never done. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Senator Paul Newton, I uh, serve you in our state Senate. I just want to thank you for caring, caring enough about our state to be with us this morning. I mean, what we're hearing today is, is huge. There's not a state in the nation that wouldn't want to be in our place right now. For more than a decade, uh, we have worked to make North Carolina the top destination for business. We know that when job creators consider a manufacturing site, they are expecting a 50 plus year bet to be paid on the state they choose. This is not a short term decision, this is a very long term decision. And here in North Carolina, the legislature has done everything in its power to create a sustainable, long lasting, pro-business environment. From our constructive regulatory environment to our tax policies, to our exceptional workforce, We've given full confidence to job creators that when they choose North Carolina, they have a partner that will help them be successful for the next 50 plus years. As CNBC recently recognized, North Carolina truly is the best state for business. And it's only getting better thanks to Wolfspeed. Wolfspeed's $5 billion capital investment puts North Carolina on the map for chip production. The jobs created with an average pay of over $77,000 will put good money in North Carolinians' pockets, and in exchange, Wolf Speed will be rewarded for the most productive workforce in North America. On behalf of Senator Phil Berger and the rest of my colleagues in the Senate, we are excited to see this fabrication plant come to life and look forward to, Wolf, to watch Wolf Speed continue to grow and innovate right here in North Carolina for many decades to come. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Tim Moore, Speaker of the North Carolina House of Representatives. Greg, I want to say thank you. This is absolutely incredible. The pride that we have that this is a North Carolina originated company, uh, showing the amazing uh, resilience and, and opportunities through our university system, uh, how that has developed and grown is just, I mean, it, what more proof do we need? Uh, this is a company that was a leader, of course, uh, but for uh, but for then Cree, we probably wouldn't have le LED lights right now. I mean, these these folks are leaders in, in so many more technologies. This transition in technology is game changing, not only for North Carolina, but for the entire country. Uh, we know from a national security standpoint how important it is that we have access to chips. Uh, that can't be overstated, and so the ability to now produce that here in our country, and, and, and with a great deal of pride, Governor, that you have as well, here in North Carolina, to produce that here in this great state improves the lives, the safety, and the strength of this nation. Uh, the CHIPS Act is absolutely transformational. Uh, we're glad to see that, but, but really, the fact that a North Carolina company is taking the lead on this is incredible. Uh, so we're very proud. Greg, thank you for what you all are doing. 
for the jobs you're creating, for the world record, uh, or the state record anyway, investment in terms of capital infrastructure. Uh, this is absolutely incredible news. On behalf of my colleagues in the House of Representatives, thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everybody. Robert Reed, State Representative for Chatham County and uh, Durham County right now, soon to be Randolph. I know Dur Durham is very close to you, so just remember that, Mr. Lowe. And <laughs> but with that being said, I am so thankful to be here, both in my capacity as representative and also in my capacity as State House uh, leader in the Democratic Party. What I will tell you is this. I can't tell you how excited I am right now. I am, I am, my stomach is fluttering. It is just the most amazing thing to happen, and it took so much work. And I thank so many people, and I can't name everybody because I've been told already to keep this three minutes. But what I will tell you that we can do is this. We can continue to be the example in this country of what happens when you work together. And that has been the most important part of this. We have had Democrats and Republicans, UNC and NC State people all working together, and we want you to recognize all of us working together means the world. So thank you for this. Thank you for investing in us. Thank you, North Carolina. Thank you, Commissioner Sanders, Secretary Sanders. And thank you, all of you, for being here. We will see you soon. Good morning. I am Valerie Fouché. I am the senator for Chatham County. And I congratulate everyone who has worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make today's announcement possible. As all of you know, Chatham County and North Carolina have been on a roll lately uh, when it comes to economic development. VinFast will soon be building electric vehicles in Chatham County. And today, we're celebrating another company that's taking us to the future, a clean energy future. Wolf Speed will do amazing things in North Carolina. They already do amazing things here. Uh, with their deep roots in our state coming out of their early days at NC State University, Wolf Speed represents the power of knowledge and education to change our world for the better. A new type of chip, computer chips, rather, Wolf Speed is making will go into many products that would be a part of our clean energy future. Electric vehicles are certainly one product that will benefit, but the new plant in Chatham County will also produce chips that can be used for renewable energy and storage systems, fast charging stations for those electric cars, and many other uses. As a country, our ability to produce next generation computer chips right here at home is vitally important. In a moment, you'll hear from an official from the U.S. Department of Commerce who will tell us more about what today's announcement means for our country overall. But before I close, let me just say we already know what Wolf Speed's project means for Chatham County and for North Carolina. New jobs, new opportunities for our people, and one more example of how North Carolina is the best place to do business in the world. Now, everyone, please join me in welcoming our next speaker from the United States Department of Commerce, Mr. Ron Chatterjee. Good morning, North Carolina. Good morning. Oh, this is the biggest investment in the state's history. We can do a little bit better. Good morning, North Carolina. Good morning. All right. Well, I will say I am from the Department of Commerce. I'm the chief economist, but aside from title, the most important thing is I'm from Durham, North Carolina. And so this is home for me. And uh, my boss, Secretary Raimondo, has been here so many times in North Carolina. So I said, can you just give me this one chance? Can I come for this one? And she said, all right, that's fine, OK? President Biden is in Ohio today announcing another big semiconductor investment. And so I got to do this one, and I'm very pleased to be here and be home with my family for the weekend. I really want to thank a few people just to get kicked off. First is, is Governor Roy Cooper. And um, Governor Cooper, first, on behalf of President Biden and Secretary Raimondo and the entire administration, thank you for everything you're doing. You are um, a leader who is leading in a time when we're very divided on so many issues, but you bring us together. And you can see this on the dais today. Thank you for everything you've done in your entire career in public service, but also here as governor. Every time Secretary Raimondo comes back from North Carolina, she says, that guy, Governor Cooper, he's amazing. 
And I say, I knew that. He's my governor. So thank you. I also want to thank the Secretary of Commerce. I want to thank our educational leaders, our legislative leaders here today. You guys have a hard job. I know it. And you have diverse perspectives on how to get things done. But the one thing that you saw in each of our speakers from the General Assembly is they love North Carolina and they're proud. And it's awesome to see that. So thank you very much for being here. And thank you for all the good work that you're doing. This is one of those days where, um, you know, there's so much thanks and so much pride to go along. But I really want to call out Greg Lowe and Wolf Speed because when job creators make these investments in North Carolina, it's not just the number of jobs, right? It's what it means for families. So I'm an economist, so when someone says, okay, 1,800 jobs, I tally it up in my Excel spreadsheet, I add up to all the other jobs we've created in North Carolina. VinFast come into Chatham County, the Toyota battery plant in Greensboro, and all the other investments that Governor Cooper has and has in the pipeline. But behind each job is a family, and I think they're a lot like my family. I'm thinking about the kids who are gonna go to camp, I'm thinking about the Little League they're gonna play in, I'm thinking about the little bit of stress that'll be off the shoulders of the parents when they have a career and a job at a place like Wolf Speed. And it's not just Wolf Speed, right? It's the entire supply chain. Because companies in this business are part of a much broader ecosystem. So when you're thinking about the battery investment in Greensboro, the Wolf Speed investment in Chatham County, and the VinFast investment here in North Carolina, that's a supply chain. From chips, to batteries, to electric vehicles. The same kind of electric vehicles that are charging right now at the governor's mansion. I'm gonna take him up on that deal now that I know it's, it's open. But see, these supply chains are up for grabs. We shouldn't just assume they're gonna to come to North Carolina or the United States of America. In fact, companies all around the world are competing to get exactly those investments at home. Because with those investments and those jobs comes the keys to the future. And if we wanna control our own future, we need to make sure these investments are right here in the United States of America. And that's what we're doing today with these investments. And so I wanna congratulate everyone here for making North Carolina part of the supply chain resilience project for the United States of America. Because when you think about it, it's not just economic security, it's not just jobs, it's also national security. You've seen what a tyrant in another country can do when he controls the supply of energy. We, no one in this audience should ever want any other country to have that much leverage over us. And the way to compete with every other country in the world is to invest right here in America. So when President Biden came to office, this is one of the biggest challenges he faced, in addition to the pandemic and the economy being in a very difficult place. And I gotta say, a lot of people didn't think that he could do much about it. You gotta to bring together Republicans and Democrats, get through all the bureaucracy in Washington. But I'd like to say I think he's done a lot in this regard. Look at the bipartisan infrastructure law. We've been talking about infrastructure for like 20 years. I remember I worked in previous administrations. Every week was infrastructure week. But now we're gonna have an infrastructure decade because President Biden brought Republicans and Democrats together to get the job done. And where are those roads, those rails, those bridges, that high-speed internet equipment, where's it gonna be made? Right here in the United States of America because we got made in America and made in the USA as part of the bipartisan infrastructure law. And he didn't stop there, right? He thought about the Inflation Reduction Act to bring costs of energy down. But not just that, because in the long term, where's solar power gonna come from? Where's wind power gonna come from? Where's the carbon capture technology that we need to reduce emissions gonna come from? The investments in the Inflation Reduction Act make sure the answer is right here in North Carolina and right here in the United States of America. And the last piece is the Chips and Science Act. The Chips and Science Act is gonna be a game changer for the industry that Greg has built his career on. And Greg is a legend in this industry from his work at Freescale. I mean, you've seen it all. And I think in the next stage, you're gonna see even more given where you're sitting. And we're glad that you're where you are. But when you look at where the industry is going, if all the chips are made in one part of the world, we're gonna have supply chain disruptions like we did during the pandemic. And y'all be honest, how many people really knew what supply chains were before 2020, okay? <laughs> Now, at a cocktail party, everybody wants to talk to the economist about supply chains, okay? But I know we knew very little about them before. But when you can't get the goods you depend on, when car prices are rising, when you're wondering why a shock a world away is gonna affect jobs here in North Carolina, you start to pay attention to supply chains. And the only way to have economic prosperity and security is to make our supply chains more resilient and build things right here in America. And that's what the CHIPS Act is gonna do. You're gonna see fabs, which are the semiconductor manufacturing facilities, built all over the country. You're gonna see the materials like silicon carbide and the other substrates that go into the semiconductor manufacturing all over America. And we're gonna to work together with our partners and allies to make sure that we'll never see the disruptions like we saw during the pandemic. And we're never going to see those furloughs, those factories shutting down like we did due to those economic shocks. The last thing I'll say is I was, uh, I was in the audience when the president signed the Chips and Science Act. 
and I thought a lot about what it meant for home here in North Carolina and what it meant for the country. And the thing that stuck with me most was he said, today is a day for builders. It's what we do in America, we build. And I think it's true today here with Wolf Speed and the governor and the entire team. So on behalf of everyone in the Biden administration, Greg, I want to thank you for choosing to build together here in North Carolina and for making a bet on America. Thanks so much. What a beautiful day to be in North Carolina and what a perfect day to hail from Chatham County. Good morning, my name is Karen Howard. I'm chair of the Chatham County Board of Commissioners. Um, I have a lot of thanks to give. This project certainly confirms us as the epicenter of the emerging high-tech industry in Central North Carolina. And thank you to Wolf Speed for having the vision to bring this project to Chatham County. There's so many relationships and collaborations that got us to this moment, though. So many partners, organizations, entities that believed in Siler City and Chatham County and in our ability to meet the demands of forward-looking industries. I'm bound to miss a few as I attempt to meet out gratitude and appreciation where it is due, but I hope that you know, that each of you know, that whatever part you played in bringing this project to North Carolina, to Chatham County, and to Siler City, our entire Board of Commissioners is deeply appreciative. We're grateful for the support and collaboration between the General Assembly and Governor Cooper's office, especially over the past few months as we had that sprint to the finish line. Representative Reeves and Senator Fushi, this will undoubtedly add to the legacy of your representation of Chatham County, and for that we are truly appreciative. Golden Leaf was again a key partner and we thank Scott Hamilton and his entire team. We know that a project of this scale could not have been possible without significant utility partners. Our record of regional collaboration continues to grow and we would not have won this project without the help of our neighbors in, Asheville, in Asheboro and our partnership with Duke. We are also appreciative of the support of our friends at Randolph Economic Development Corporation. Their input was critical to the win for all of North Carolina. What we know is that businesses do not locate without doing their homework. They're looking for a skilled work source and they're surveying an entire country and sometimes they're surveying in, in many other countries. North Carolina's community college system, Chatham County Schools and a network of public universities in North Carolina is second to none. And for that, we are extremely grateful. We know that they are preparing our citizens for the jobs of the future and making sure that the jobs that come with Wolf Speed are accessible to Chatham County residents. This record-setting investment will be a boon to all the residents of Chatham. And as we continue to see the shift of the tax burden from purely residential to increasingly more industrial and um, technological and commercial, we're going to see that families are able to do more with their dollars. And Wolf Speed is bringing jobs that pay considerably more than the average wage in Chatham County now. In fact, almost 87% more than the average wage. That's going to be life-changing for families in Chatham County and Siler City. So I do want to say to all of you that paid any role in this, on behalf of a community that has waited patiently for just the right industry, at just the right time, in just the right place, thank you for choosing Chatham County. Good morning. Uh, my name is Chip Price. I'm the mayor of Siler City. And just like our Representative Reeves here, I'm a native Chatham County and also a native Salafiti, and I get butterflies in my stomach too because I am really excited about what's been going on here and it's finally come to fruition. The folks that know me said you had two minutes to speak. They said you'll never even introduce yourself in two minutes, but I think I can get this done. So with that, we are ecstatic to welcome this legacy project that will benefit our community, region, and state for years and years to come. Wolf Speed 
recognize what an exciting time it is to join the Siler City community and that we are excited to partner and grow with Wolf Speed over the next decade and more. The jobs and economic impacts are incredible and the reaffirmation of our community by Wolf Speed, the state and local officials that are here today are some of the greatest things that can possibly happen. The success of this location did not happen by accident. Over more than a decade, our local economic leaders have focused on putting the building blocks in place and highlighting our quality way of life. The work of our own Chatham EDC, local economic leaders, including the Chatham Advanced Manufacturing Ownership Team, our town manager, staff, and our town commissioners made this win possible. And I take my hat off to each and every person that had a, a part in that. There's one last thing I want to say, because I can keep, I can get this done. <laughs> I want to recognize or acknowledge the citizens of Siler City for their unwavering support and patience during this whole process. They could have given up on us a long time ago, but they hung in there, and here we are. Thank you very much. Mayor, I think you ended things very well. Nice job. Uh, I think all of the citizens of North Carolina, this is a day for celebration. Uh, a lot of work has been done to get us here, but now we need to get to work. And uh, Ronnie Chatterjee, we look forward to seeing you as there is competition for the CHIPS Act Fund. Now, Ronnie didn't tell you that he's also a Duke University guy <laughs> who came to the event where we stood right here and I honored Coach Shashevsky, and I don't know whether he felt something for me or not, but notice the tie that Ronnie is wearing today. <laughs> so, thank you all for being here. I think uh, media, I don't know exactly how we're going to handle this. Uh, Sam, you, we're going to do, okay, great. Thank you guys for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you.